Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about Central Venus Catheter Removal. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. So the learning objectives we are going to cover in this session will be what is central venous catheter? What are the indications for the removal of a central venous catheter? What do we check before removing central venous catheter? How to remove the central venous catheter? And what are the potential complications related to central venous catheter removal? Let's get into the session. Before discussing about the central venous catheter, let's have a brief introduction of what is central venous catheter. A central venous catheter, otherwise called a central line or CVAD or C line. A central venous catheter, also known as a central line, is long, soft, thin, hollow tube that is placed into a large vein that ends in KOHL junction. Central venous catheter has multiple lumen in it and the lumens are named as proximal, distal and medial. A central venous line is mainly used for the administration of high-risk medications, inotrophs, chemotherapy, or total parenteral nutrition, etc. Next, let's discuss the sites of central venous catheters. The insertion sites of central venous catheters include internal jugular line, which is right and left jugular. Next is subclavian vein, that is right and left subclavian vein. Next comes the femoral line. And next is pick line that is peripherally inserted central catheter. And the sites are basilic, brachial, cephalic or medial cubital vein. Here comes the indications for central venous catheter removal. The first is completion of therapy when the treatment course is completed, the central venous catheter can be removed. For example, chemotherapy, IV antibiotic therapy, or total parental nutrition, or when the inotrophs are no more needed. Next indications are when the patient is hemodynamically stable. Make sure that the patient is hemodynamically stable and all the vital parameters are normal before removing central venous catheter. The next indications are occlusion or blockage. If the central venous catheter becomes blocked or partially occluded, impeding the flow of fluids or medications, it should be removed. Next is mechanical complications like dislodgement, migration, or damage to the catheter requires removal to prevent further complications. Next is infection or sepsis. If the patient had developed central line associated bloodstream infection that is clapsy or any other bloodstream infection, it should be removed. Next, what do we check before removing central venous catheter? First is check the order for central venous catheter removal and the informed consent. Next is check the clotting profile where we check for the INR, PTT and platelets. Consider the patient's current anticoagulant therapy and evaluate the risk of bleeding associated with central venous catheter removal. Next is check the hemodynamic status of the patient. Here, we check that the patient is hemodynamically stable and all the vital parameters are normal. Check and ensure there is no ongoing medications. Check if the central line tip culture has been ordered. And if so, arrange the articles accordingly and label the container before sending the tip culture to the lab. Check if central line blood culture has been ordered. And if so, the blood sample needs to be taken before removing the central venous catheter. Next, let's discuss how to remove the central venous catheter. Identify the patient using two identifier and explain the procedure to the patient. 
Place a patient in supine position for removing central venous catheter. And the importance of placing patient in supine position will be explained in the session later. Next is performing hand hygiene and prepare dressing tray aseptically. Next is wear personal protective equipments. Don clean gown, blouse, and mask with face shield. Remove all dressing by wearing clean gloves and discard them. Next, perform hand hygiene and wear sterile gloves. Clean the site with chlorhexidine. Next is, carefully remove sutures with scissors or surgical blade without harming the surrounding site. Next, lower head of the bed or place the patient in Trendelenburg position if tolerated. Now, let's discuss the importance of placing the patient in Trendelenburg position. While removing central venous catheter, if the patient is sitting up, the pressure gradient favors air entry into the circulation. So, air can enter into the blood vessels and affect the circulation. But, what happens in Trendelenburg position is, this position increases the central venous pressure at the insertion site and reduces the risk of air entrainment. So this position allows for changes in pressure gradient of the blood or air atmosphere so the air entry is less favorable. And hence, patient is placed in Trendelenburg position before removing the central venous catheter line. If the Trendelenburg position is not possible, we can place the patient in supine position and it should be made sure that the central venous catheter is removed at the end of inspiration. The next step in removing the central venous catheter is instruct the patient to perform the Valsalva maneuver. What happens in Valsalva maneuver is instruct the patient to take a deep breath in and hold it. This step could not be possible in case if the patient is on mechanical ventilator. And in such cases, the central venous catheter is removed at the end of inspiration. Next is, apply dry gauze over insertion site and pull the catheter gently and steadily, keeping the catheter parallel to the skin. After removal of central venous catheter, Apply continuous and direct pressure for a minimum of 5 minutes to the insertion site with a sterile gauze pad to control bleeding. Next, check the central venous catheter for rough edges, contamination surrounding, and lint or any fracture in the catheter. If there is an order for central venous tip catheter, send the tip of the catheter to the microbiology laboratory with the requisition for culture and sensitivity. Use sterile scissors to cut off at least 3 cm of the tip and place the tip in a sterile container and seal it. Apply an appropriate sterile or occlusive dressing to the site and replace the articles. Next is document the date and time of removal of the central venous catheter. Next comes the potential complications after central venous catheter removal. First is air emboli. If the catheter is removed in supine or if the patient inspires at the time the catheter is removed, intrathoracic pressure will decrease compared to atmospheric pressure and may result in air traveling into the venous system. Next complication is clot emboli. A blood clot may be dislodged from the catheter on removal and travel into the venous system. The next complication is cannula emboli. While removing the cannula, if too much pressure is applied, the cannula may fracture at the skin site, leading to cannula emboli. Next complication is bleeding and hematoma at the site. If there is inadequate pressure applied during removal or coagulopathy is present, there may be a chance of bleeding and hematoma at the site. So, so far, what we have discussed is what is central venous catheter, what are the indications for the removal of central venous catheter, 
What do we check before removing central venous catheter? How to remove the central venous catheter? And what are the potential complications related to central venous catheter removal? If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.